for heat when you got digital printers. The heat hasn't been on back here for years. I just never turn it on because we have presses running or bindery equipment running that produces enough heat. And it's a fairly new building, so it keeps the heat. But yeah, it's wild. You, there's no need for heat in the production area. I know you're not gonna believe me, but I, I just need to show you what happened. I was opening up a ream of paper and this is what I found inside. There's a washer in here. There's a machine somewhere that's missing a washer. You can see a little bit of it on the paper here. That never happened to me before. Actually, another thing that happened last week that I didn't document, uh, here. I ordered 100 pound text and uh, the box that came had 100 pound cover labels. The paper was correct, the box label was correct, but the ream labels were wrong. Somebody was uh, sleeping at the wheel that day. Okay, we're having a little bit of a problem with the 37 to here. You can see these line marks that are showing up. And uh, those marks, I can tell by the look of the mark that it's happening before the paper goes through the fuser and the toner melts. Because what happens is the toner jumps across onto the paper and it's just held there by static electricity uh, for a few inches before it hits the fuser. And it's probably buckling the paper and rubbing against something which agitates the toner on the paper and makes those lines appear. So I immediately thought it's either something with the transfer or something with the fuser is causing that they're moving at different speeds and buckling the paper. So opened her up, got the fuser out and uh, one of the insulating sleeves here has popped out. So this lower roller, it moves. So it was basically squeezing the paper on one side, not the other side and causing it to buckle in there. So let's uh, tear this apart and replace the, uh, the insulating sleeves. There's one on each side. I got the kit that replaces the belt, uh, the upper insulating sleeves and gears, but that stuff all looks okay. Uh, it's not gonna take long to open this up and just pull this lower one out and do that. So let's do that right now. So I have never worked on a fuser from a 1070, 3070 before. So this is my first attempt. Um, I assume it's gonna be fairly similar to the 6500, which I have experience with, and the C8000, which I have experience with. And that means that we're gonna take screws out. This is gonna split in half, and then we're gonna pull the transmission off, and we should be able to pull that roller out. So I do have a service manual, so I am gonna look in there too, just to see if I am doing anything horribly wrong. Okay, in order to split this apart, we're gonna be taking out this screw with the big head on it. And there should be another one over here. I need to take this plastic off. There's got to be another one here. Here you are. Now she's open. Now you can see the broken sleeve here and how, how loose this is. Now you see that uh, this marking here, that's no big deal. Uh, number one, it's the bottom roller, uh, which is never gonna contact a uh, toner that is not fused. And number two, it's outside where your sheet is traveling. Here's a 13 by 19 inch sheet, and you can see how much inside the edges. So that is not gonna affect print quality at all. Uh, I'll still get 
a good bit of life out of this lower roller. Looking at this, I don't think I'm going to have to pull the transmission off at all here. Taking these plates off and disconnecting the, the electrical connection for the fusing lamp that's inside this roller. And this should just lift right out. Just going to start by taking this top plate off that's holding down the roller. Then we can pull this connector out. It's got a little snap on the bottom. You got to squeeze it. I think take this out. And then this is the bracket that actually fixes that lamp in the center of the roller and holds it there. This side's ready to come out now. I just got to do the same thing over here. Take that top plate off. First undo the electrical connection. Okay, this gets unplugged. It looks like we do the rest from the top. Let's Uh-oh. Looks like the lamp is broken. I don't think I did that. Now yeah, this should lift straight up. Yeah, that ain't good. So I don't know if I broke that right now or if it was broken before. I think if it was broken before, the printer wouldn't run. Like it, if that uh, lost continuity on the uh, the lamp, it would it wouldn't run. But maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, somebody can let me know. But I think I actually might have an extra lamp, upper fusing lamp, fusing lamp assembly two upper. Looks like I'm striking out. Fuser lamp assembly two up. Fuser lamp assembly two up. I somehow seem to get myself into shenanigans. Well, shame on me. I should have probably torn that apart a little bit more to make sure there were no other parts that I needed to order. Oh well. But, so next week, it's gonna be a busy week. I have a lot of work for both of these machines. And what I'm gonna do is Pull the fusing lamp out of the envelope fuser for the 1070 that I have and throw that in the fuser for the 37 so I can run both of these. Um, that is going to be the best bet. Uh, a new lamp is only 50 bucks and I'll order one but it'll take a couple days to be here and well I want to be running for those days. So let's replace these sleeves and put that lamp over in here. So this sleeve is still good. However, if the other one is bad, this one is probably gonna follow suit pretty soon. What I am gonna, I am gonna hold on to that just in case for future um, reasons. Uh, if for some reason just one goes out in the future, well, I'll have a spare while I wait for a new one to get here. But till then, just put the new one in here. And that bearing will be just fine. I think these bearings are actually the same as the 6500. And I have a couple of those spares. So the kit that I got has a new one of these gears, which I'll probably put the new one on. Keep this as a spare. Sometimes these uh, yeah. There's a really hard edge on there. 
I don't know what that was hitting. I can file that down. You don't want to force these things, so hopefully I can just knock this edge down. Yeah, both sides are bad. Like a charm. Save that for backup. And there's a new one. Here's the discombobulated bearing. Oh, this bearing shot too. Okay. Let's get that off of there. Bad bearing, a bad sleeve. That all opened up. Yeah, that can't go back in there. Now I get to see if uh, the C6500 ones will fit on there. And this is why you keep parts that aren't worn out. So I did confirm that the uh, the insulating sleeves and the bearings are interchangeable for 1070, 37, the and the C6500. That's what I've had these for. So we can put that right back in there. That is a lot nicer than this garbage. Oh, I think the lip goes on the inside. And I'm just going to put these used parts back in their respective bag here. So I know what they are in case I have, ever have to use them to get by. And let's pull the lamp out of this one. Time. Now, I'm relatively sure that that lamp broke whenever the uh, bearing went out and the insulating sleeve because I've used the lower lamp in my old C6500 for years and years. I mean, they are, I've always been scared of breaking one of these, but I'm always amazed at how durable they actually are. So let's throw this one in. Wonder why this lower roller is black and the other one's orange. I don't know if there's different ones for envelope fusers and not. I think that bearing might be on backwards. I put that bearing on backwards. Man, I hate it when I do that. <laughs> well, try again. Okay, so when you're doing this, make sure you have this this rib of the bearings on the outside edge and the outside edge on both sides. And then that sits on the outside of this frame right here and right here. So then it can't move back and forth. So once you have it down all the way, it's in place. Actually... I think we're gonna put the metal one back on first. So that little hand is what holds the end of the uh, lamp right down through the center of it. So we need to hook that wire and set it in there. And this goes in this way. That wire comes up through the top and out the back. Okay, now that plate is in. Can rotate this back. 
and put these two screws back in. Oh, now I just gotta remember where these goodies go. Let's do the metal bracket first. That went in that way. Yeah, it was fastened that way. Plug this in and I believe we're just about done. And we're done. Throw that in and we'll be good to go Monday morning. I'm gonna fire it up real quick just because I'd like to know that it is actually ready to go Monday morning. Nothing's worse than coming in, ready to work, and having to fix a problem. Try to avoid that. Well, that was easy, kinda. Could've went a little bit better, could've went a lot worse, but uh, got another lamp on the way for this one, and I'll throw it in here next week, but at least we got two machines ready to roll on Monday. So it just goes to show having extra parts on hand is always a great thing. Although it's not necessarily feasible for everything, it does come in handy sometimes. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.